Okay, welcome to part seven, exporting the final, final, final copy, doing all the final little touches. What I want to talk about first is running your test clips. So what I've been doing for this video is, is hitting play in my timeline for you guys to be watching this stuff, but I'm putting the actual copy over top of the screen so you can see it in, in uh, legless form. You've always have to assume there's going to be some lag on your timeline. As you're watching this, computer isn't actually playing this live to full speed. It'll be missing some frames, dropping some frames. This is where you need a really fast computer to do this as best you can. Um, so every time I hit play on my space bar, you guys have been noticing I've been putting full screen the actual video file up and it's been making it a sinking nightmare to get all the peaks lining up. I think I've missed a few by a few frames. But what you want to be doing now is I just have put up an example 30 second piece here. This is from my cut down of the 90 and 90 Bonnaroo video. I've just taken this segment here. Uh, and we're going to use this as our little test clip. So we've finished all of our fine tweaking. We've done all the zooming, matching to waveform. And now I want to see if everything is lined up like it should be. We're going to export a test sequence. Um, and look for all little final blips and touches at full speed playback versus our, you know, potential buffering and lost frames in our timeline here. Okay, so I'm not going to get into export details yet. I'm just simply going to show you that we are exporting this little clip. Tutorial, we'll call this tutorial test one. Save. Don't worry about any of the settings. I'm just going to hit this and export. Use the magic of editing to speed this up. Okay, so we exported that. So here you can see the tutorial test is sitting right here. This is all my images I've loaded for the project to throw into timeline, all my reference pieces. I should probably sort this because it's getting pretty ugly, but you can see tutorial test is now sitting right there. And what we wanna be doing, first off I have written down here is the two sayings, you wanna listen to your video, you don't wanna be watching it, and you wanna watch, don't listen. Of this, timeline i've intentionally exported three different versions again we're not talking about quality yet um you can see them here are i have exactly the way i wanted it to play which i know is actually perfect it's the version i used for my i think instagram teaser then i have an intentional uh, audio shift of i think i shifted 24 frames forward so that's an intentional screw up of beats and if you're really trained to the ear and eye you would pick up on the fact that the clips aren't quite matching to the beat and then i have another one here that i've left my um i've left my clip track at almost full volume so all the stuff i don't want you hearing is actually being played and you'll hear Again, when you're listening to your final versus watching it, you're gonna hear all these weird up and downs that you know you're gonna to have to come back into and do a final master on. So let's play the, the full Bonnaroo teaser as you guys would have seen it if you've seen this before. Um, all the beats match up. It's actually inside a small edit, all the things I've talked about. We got match on actions, high fives match to the beat, flames match to the beat, cheers is matched to the beat, movement matches to the beat. Um, you'll see it all, it goes pretty quick. Okay, everything's pretty awesome there. Let's just say by mistake, you didn't have some clips matched up. Um, I can pick out all these right off the bat because I've listened to this a thousand times trying to get the final edits down. Uh, you guys might not notice it as much, uh, but I have in here, as a reminder, you might just by accident in your editing get a lucky break where suddenly all your clips somehow match up to a beat perfectly and you're not actually doing that much fine tuning at all. So this is the beat now shifted by uh, half a second or so and you might notice that now all the hard there's that essential hard snare sound through the whole thing originally I lined up my cuts to that and now the cuts don't match so everything clips are now looking like they're cut just ahead of that hard snare sound Flames kind of look good because it was a slower cut. Ok, 
Okay, so my eyes, basically if you were to blink on when you want the cuts, it should be exactly on that hard snare. Let's play this back one more time. Cut. 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 And it's not quite lined up. Last example here is the audio being screwed up, so let's play this back with some of the clips not being muted or just not being leveled properly. I actually think that sounded pretty good, but anyway, you can hear all the background audio. You might have wanted that to happen. Uh, maybe you didn't want that to happen. So that we, that's what you'd be looking for first. Exporting test clips to listen to your tracks and then watching your tracks. Doing two different things. Being able to watch this with no lag is um, what we're after here. So you guys, I have my um, 2015 Boots and Hearts folder opened up here. Just to show you an example of how many times you might be doing this process of going back in, doing some fine tweaks in your timeline, exporting a super rough version, meaning rough quality version uh, video to just watch at full speed, finding a mistake, making an editing mark. I have paper in front of me, I usually just make the timeline mark. Oh shit, the, you know, five minute 26, girl too loud. And I'll go back in, I'll make a change, re-export, keep doing that. I still don't care about the high quality upload version. We're doing this process over and over until you think you've finalized everything you, you have caught. So here I got, you know, 104 retest one, number two. My finals are usually when I'm really close. Here I remember I was really annoyed. I moved to the morning, you know, fuck, fuck, fuck late. Fuck, 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 fuck this 104, fuck this test. Uh, the next morning I got into a morning 105 test. The final morning boots this is what I, thought was my final and then I caught something later in the day and made a capital letter final 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 knowing that was my final piece um, it's crazy I was really pissed off with the audio doing some audio balancing around and had to do that many versions before I found the final version that you guys saw and I'll remind you guys even when you think you've done it all 12 times whatever you think it's done there's always gonna be something you miss after you've uploaded to YouTube and it's just kind of too little too late let it go. Uh, even through these videos, I was finding tiny mistakes in the timeline showing you guys examples. So, so all I can say for that is every time you spit out a final, walk away, save it like I said, come back in a little bit, let your brain simmer, go off for a full day and then come back. Don't just do everything back to back to back or you're going to start losing uh, your ability to pick up on those fine details. Okay, getting into export settings, I just have a single GoPro clips properties loaded up here. You can get into an issue with YouTube. Uh, well, first off, the easiest is just not having high enough quality export settings. We'll give you a really crappy quality final video for YouTube. I got a lot of comments saying, how is your video so clear? My stuff was completely, you know, uh, bitmapped, pixelated, texturized, compressed, blah, blah, blah. It's all just doesn't look good. Um, and that could be one of two things. That could be uh, too crappy of export setting or sometimes the case a true lossless, um, not really with GoPro, but let's say you're working with RED. If you've exported a massive five gigabyte to God knows how big file, YouTube isn't actually uploading that original file. It's compressing the crap out of it. Um, I have right here one single clip. If we go to details, you can see the data rate of this clip is around 29,000 kilobytes per second, switched up to 29.8 megabits per second. Um, and then if I go into my export settings for this timeline, right down here I have a target bit rate of megabits per second is 34. I've actually gone too high there. You basically just want to match. Again, this is in Adobe. This will be a much more advanced option. I think some other simpler editing programs would just have a low, middle, high, um, and original quality export setting. You basically want to match this to what the original clips are. If you're shooting under... Okay, that'd be about 19,000 megabits per second. 
um, you know automatically you're compressing the quality. And if you overkill and just go way too high, again, the timeline default that I use is set for a video quality way beyond GoPro. Um, if you set way too high, the rendering is just going to be making up pixels uh, and creating excess information that originally isn't there. So there's no need for it. Okay, and just as an example, side by side. Okay, got the desktop here. This is the file I just downloaded off my YouTube channel at 45 megabytes. And this is the original file at 672 megabytes. Uh, so I'm not saying YouTube necessarily uses this file version. They might do another compression to let you re-download it. But there's definitely something like this going on when you upload. Um, and I notice it all the time. You go to 1080p at 60 frames viewing mode on your videos. And I've even noticed myself, you go here, right, 1080, 60 frames a second, and I'm looking at this, and I can just see around the edges of all the objects. Everything is definitely not as sharp as it was being exported, so you can't really win with YouTube. Other sites, um, other video sites that let you upload might have way more higher quality, have lossless options, but YouTube's handling so much volume of so many people uploading videos, they can't really afford to let you go at full uh, right there. So the best thing you can do is keep your clips as original as possible and just deal with the YouTube compression. Um, don't by accident export something that's too crap quality and don't overkill because that's going to be doing the same thing. Uh, you'll leave the rendering process up to just guessing by the computer and it won't won't work out. Uh, so I wanted to keep this last section pretty quick. That's all I can read here. Last thing I want to show you is just the idea of an end slate. I've oftentimes finished all my editing, exported, um, the final video, gone to click upload to YouTube and realized I forgot my option for end slate. Okay, with the ability to click over your content now and have users just keep going to the next video, you might as well, like I say, might as well stick one on at the end of everything you do. Um, so here you can just see at the end, this is my 90 and 90. Okay, so that's the end of it. I may or may not do a final video on how to edit that sequence effect I did in my snowboarding video. I'll just play it here right now. You guys can let me know if you want me to walk you through the uh, frame by frame tricks and tips for using that sequence effect. But uh, we'll leave that for now. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found all this useful. I tried to go as quick as I can, but it's really hard to not take up a lot of minutes. So I'll stop right here. Enjoy these pieces. Hopefully it makes your editing better. Hopefully you learn something. And I'm going to get back out there and get back to actually making some real video. Editing is fun takes time and a lot of trial and error and a lot of screw ups and sometimes just by luck you get something working your way um, and send me any edits you've made after watching these tutorials and I'll uh, gladly watch them over a bowl of popcorn. Okay, take care guys. Bye.